is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio. And today I'm finally gonna get to where I show you how to stretch your own canvas. So what I have here is a 16 by 20 value pack canvas from Michaels. It is the thinner ones that you can get. Um, and I'm gonna show you the entire pack so you know what it looks like. It comes in a set of five like this and it's Artist Loft brand. Um, and it doesn't matter which kind you purchase. What matters is they don't wanna have one that's so thick that the, um, the canvas won't stretch around it. So here's what I've done. I took my painting to the window and I'm, I use the light from the window to see where my painting, the corners actually are. And I marked each of the corners. You can just do that with a pen. You don't wanna do it with a really dark like Sharpie or anything because you don't want it to go through and be seen on your other side. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that as a guide for how to place this canvas. Now I'm not taking off the original canvas. In the future, I probably will because I'd like to use this canvas um, for my chalk couture uh, project. I would probably at least cut out this section for myself, but today we're not gonna do all that. We are just going to stretch this painting over this existing canvas. Now, one thing I've noticed is that none of the paintings are exactly 16 by 20. And I'm gonna show you. This painting actually measures 15 and three quarters by 19 and five eighths. So that means it's going to be shy on the sides. So when this gets folded over, you're gonna see some white on both sides. So what I have to try to do is make sure I've got an equal amount of white on this side that I do on this side. On the top and bottom, it's pretty close, but I'm gonna have to be very careful to make sure that it is exactly where it needs to be. Because I'm gonna have some white showing, I can either leave this wrapped when I'm done with that little bit of white, or I can choose to paint all of this border um, a coordinating color that matches my painting once I'm finished. In addition to that, your other option is to take this stretched canvas and get an open back frame, which you can find at Michael's in their framing department. And because it's a very shallow uh, uh, canvas, you can use almost any frame they have on the shelf. You will not use glass with this. You don't need glass. So you take the glass out and you put the frame on and then you use something called offsets and have it attached in the back. You can ask the custom framer what that means and they can give you some better idea. Because I was a custom framing manager at a Michaels, um, that is how I know how to stretch a canvas. We used to do it all the time. And so I'm using what I've learned from there to help you guys out and doing this yourself so you don't have to spend a lot of money. Now, for those of you who do not want to do it yourself, you can always take your painting just like this into Michaels and ask them to stretch it on a stretcher bar. It, you'll pay for the stretcher bar, you pay for the labor because it does take some time to get it just right. Usually what they'll do though, they don't order you a 16 by 20 stretcher bar. They will order you one that will go up under and match your size of your painting. So basically they would order one that comes in about an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch on your artwork. That way it stretches around. If you want a gallery wrap, which means your artwork is going to come all the way around the side, and I'm gonna to try to show you here and go behind it so your, the side of it would look like that. That means all of your artwork, your artwork will show from all sides, which would look really good. Then I would use a 12 by 16 canvas. So you could buy a value pack of 12 by 16. Michaels has them in that size as well. So then that means you're gonna have an inch of painting going around all sides when you do that. This particular painting is gonna have white on all sides because it is pretty close to what we've got. So let's flip this back over and let's go back to our guides. The trickiest part of this whole thing is gonna be lining up your canvas to make sure that everything on the front 
is even. We have undone so many canvases at work because there'll be a little sliver of white that'll show on one side and not the other, and then all those staples have to come back out because you think you've got it. So what I did is I made these corners, like, you know, I drew these corners, and I'm going to use those as a guide. Because my canvas stretcher bar is a little larger than the artwork, I wanna make sure that I'm coming down past those lines a little bit but on all sides. I wanna make sure I've got the same amount on all sides before I staple anything down. Now I'm gonna to try to hold this in place while I flip it just so I can look at it and determine from the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. And I'm gonna get this lined up and then I'm gonna start stapling. So okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm holding this in place. Let me see if I can slide it down to show you. I'm holding it in place. I'm taking my staple gun. Now what I have here is a Fiskars staple gun. I will put the link for this where I purchased it um, in the description. And you're also gonna need the Fiskars um, staples. And I'm gonna put those the link for that as well. I have this little screwdriver with this little flat head on it, just in case I need to take staples out. I used a very fine point Sharpie to very lightly draw my corner lines. And I have a pair of pliers here in case I have to take my staples out. I can lift them up with a screwdriver and then I can pull them out with the pliers. But for right now, what I'm gonna do is take this, I'm taking this staple gun and I'm gonna go ahead and get one side in the center of one side and I'm putting that staple in at a 45 degree angle. Now I'm going to reach across and grab the other side and I'm going to use my body as a, as kind of a stopping place. And I'm gonna pull as tightly as I can and stretch this side over. And then I'm going to staple one there. Now I'm gonna rotate this and do each end the same way. And again, you may not be able to see this, but I'm gonna pull this, staple it down, and then I'm gonna use my body again and stretch towards me, pulling it and stretching it with all my strength. Now, when I was at the framing studio, we used an air compressor and all kinds of heavy duty stuff. So this is a little different, but this is very easy for me to use considering I have a lot of joint pain and swelling. This little Fiskars staple gun is more like people who don't have a lot of hand strength, this might be good for you. It works for upholstery, so it definitely goes in the wood nicely, so keep that in mind. All right, so I'm gonna rotate this back around. I wanna check the front. And I don't think, honestly, I don't think this painting is square. Like, you see how it's got a little bit more here and a little less here, a little more there and a little less there? I have moved it so many times and shifted it that I'm annoyed because I don't think it is actually printed as a perfect rectangle. So I will probably end up putting this in a frame that will cover all these sides. But I wanna show you how to do this from this point regardless, okay? Now, once you know it is exactly placed the way you want it to be, then you're gonna to pull towards yourself, taking out all the slack you can and putting in another one. Now I'm gonna do this one as well, pulling as tight as I can, making sure your fingers are out of the way. I'm gonna hold it, but then I'm gonna move my fingers before I pull the trigger. Now I'm gonna rotate to the other side, pulling as tightly as I can. Now I'm gonna look at the front again So you'll see there's bubbles and stuff. Once you start doing the sides now, you're gonna notice the bubbles will disappear. So we're gonna work on a side. 
And just like I did, I'm gonna pull all the slack towards me, hold it in place, move my fingers before I pull the trigger, right? Okay, we're getting close, we're not quite done, but you see how tight this is. Now, it's gonna even get tighter once I finish up these last sections, but you will notice why I totally pull and stretch, you don't want this loose. This is super tight, you want it super tight. If it's flexible and moving, you're gonna see that, and it's gonna look wrinkled and warped. So let's finish up. I'm gonna tug and pull as tightly as I can on these final corners. Okay, so now we're at the point where we've got corners and we're gonna do these corners right quick and then we're gonna be done. So I'm gonna put one more staple. Oh, let me refill. Let me go ahead and show you guys how to refill this while we're doing the video. So there's a little button right here. You're gonna push it and slide it out, flip it over, and that is where you insert your staples. And then all you're gonna do is drop your staples in the bottom and shut that. And it's loaded, that's it. So let's get this tight again. All right, so I think all my corners look pretty good. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide where I want my corners to be folded from. So you see this border is not even on the sides, but I'm gonna put a frame on this. You, you know, you try to get it as close to being perfect as you can. I would prefer to not have any unevenness, but it's funny because you can see the bottom is pretty straight across. There's a little bit there and a little bit there. And then here, so these are straight, but these are crooked, but it's because they were printed crooked. Okay, so let's finish up. Let's do our corners. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide, I want my corners to flap on the side. So I'm gonna grab my little point. I'm gonna pull it down. 
and fold it in like that. And then I'm gonna staple it. Watch your fingers when you do this. And do you see how clean, let's see if I can get it in the camera, how clean that point is. I'm pulling it towards, pushing it towards the wood, folding this over, pulling it very tight. And all I have is this little flap that I'm going to staple in place. Now, if you would like, put a second one in there just to make sure you've got it held down. But that makes that stay pretty close. It's very tight up against the corner. Let's do these other two corners. And we're done. Now, it will drive me crazy that this isn't straight, but that's just one of those things um, I'm gonna have to suck it up and deal with. But again, if all I do is go get a 16 by 20 off the floor, it should fit perfectly and it should be good to go. All right, you guys, that's it. That's how you stretch your own canvas and it looks pretty in the back. All you have to do is either hang it on something when using the lip or I use the no wire hanging system from Michaels. It's fabulous. Have someone there show you how to use it and you'll love it. It is the most amazing hanging system for all of your framed pieces. But for today, this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And I hope you really learned that you can do this too. Okay, good luck, you guys. I'd love some feedback on how it worked out for you. Thank you so much for watching and for following me and for joining the group. We'll see you soon.